Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about musical talent. So there is this common belief that musical hearing skills, your training skills, are totally dependent on talent and this is an innate gift that you have at birth or you never have it. So today I want to shed some light um, onto this topic by talking about my experiences by talking about a few scientific studies and in particular I'm going to talk about whether talent does really matter or not in skills like playing music by ear, recognizing music by ear, improvising, etc. Talent is by definition an innate gift that someone has and it can't be developed by other people by any means. So by definition you can't learn a talent that another people possess. Okay, that's the definition of talent. So I want to start talking about a few personal experiences uh, that really are kind of a good example of what I see happening in real life all the time. I want to start talking about my experience. I started playing guitar, started being a musician since I was 15 years old. I always had very big issues with ear training, with relative pitch skills that always seemed kind of an impossible thing for me to develop and so I always approached uh, ear training by following the most popular method most of you are familiar with it which is the interval method and I've never been able to really improve my skills by any means so it was literally impossible and about five to six years ago I totally changed uh, the way I was practicing. So I started practicing following other principles that are totally different from what the interval method suggests. So I started practicing taking into account the context, working in a tonal way and this made a tremendous difference. It really allowed me to go from zero results in about 10 years of practicing the interval method to go and having noticeable results in a matter of weeks, literally. And I still keep on improving after five to six years after following these different principles. Right now, I can recognize chord progressions uh, by listening to a song without the help of any instrument. I can recognize melodies in the same way. Indeed, I teach other people how to do all of these things and we have a specific video course on, on that where we teach people how to recognize chords by ear, recognize uh, melodies by ear and really develop great musical hearing skills uh, which go beyond just being able to recognize melodies and chords by ear. I think my case is one of the best examples of what happened by going from practicing in an ineffective way to practicing following effective principles that allows you to really develop these skills. I was really at level zero of these skills. I, I started that I wasn't uh, able to match pitch. I wasn't able to sing the major scale. So just this case by itself is a good example of why talent is not really an important thing when it comes to develop musical hearing skills when it comes to develop your relative pitch skills in general. I didn't possess any innate gifts at all, but I was able to develop my skills and to teach other people how to do that too. Then let's talk about some other real life experiences. For example, around two years ago, I worked with a student uh, called Mauro. He is an Italian musician. He is a trumpet player. He had to do a melodic dictation exam in his conservatory. He was taking really bad marks at the mock exam. He was taking basically 0 out of 10, so the worst mark ever. And he wasn't really able to improve his skills in melodic dictation even by dedicating a lot of time in practicing intervals and other uh, exercises that his teacher was giving him. So I just show him a few basic exercises, I correct uh, his thought process and in three weeks he was able to go from 0 to 9.5 out of 10 in the melodic dictation exam at his conservatory. So this is another example why talent does not play a big role at all in developing 
your training skills. If talent really matters, how one can go from zero to 9.5 in a melodic dictation exam, classical melodic dictation exam, in only three weeks. That's totally impossible because, I mean, that's, that, that would sound like a miracle, okay? But it's not a miracle at all. There are really specific reasons why that happens. And I see it happening over and over with other students too. For example, another student called Steven was able to go from zero, so not being able to recognize melodies and chords by ear, to being able to recognize chord progressions of real songs while driving his car uh, through the city in a matter of one month. So that's another great example. So how talent can be related to uh, these kind of skills if someone can go from zero to being able to recognize chord progressions in only one month, that's impossible. This by itself means that talent is not important at all when it comes to developing these skills. Then a last real life experience that I want to talk about is related to some colleagues, some musicians that I know that were always thought to be talented, to be innately gifted because they had naturally developed great relative pitch skills without really following any particular approach. I've always been curious about how that was possible, about the way they really think when they perform ear training tasks. I know a bunch of them and so in various occasions I tested their skills and I tried to understand the real way in which they were able to accomplish these also really advanced ear training tasks. And I'm talking about four to five people that I know personally that I was able to test that were in this kind of situation where, where they never practiced anything related to ear training, but they had really great relative pitch skills. And interestingly enough, some of them, after seeing me practicing intervals with an app on my phone, told me, don't do that. Don't practice intervals because they're useless. And they weren't able to explain why, but they intuitively knew that they weren't really thinking in interval terms when performing chord progressions recognition, melodic recognition tasks, etc. So I was able to test their skills in various occasions. And what happened is that all of them really thought following the same exact principles that allowed me to improve and that are allowing hundreds of other musicians that are following our course to improve consistently. I mean, of course, you are free to not believe me, but in my experience, I tested these innately gifted people and all of them think in the same way, using the same mechanism, using the same thought process that I'm sharing with you on our YouTube channel or in our video course. So this for me is the last and ultimate confirm that talent doesn't really matter at all when it comes to ear training skills. Of course, you're free to not believe me. So I encourage you to really test the talented musicians you know and to try to understand how they think. If they think following the same principle, some kind of sharing with you, if they are thinking in intervals term, try to really understand that on an empirical way. And I'm really confident that you'll notice the same results that I've noticed with the apparently innately gifted musicians that I've tested. Well, let's now talk about the scientific studies that, are, that really investigated talent. So for this reason, I wanna show you a brief clip that I've created for another video that really explains the main scientific studies that are talking about talent and also musical talent in specific. So let's get to it. Most musicians feel like they're hitting a wall and become insanely frustrated. So much so that they start thinking they're not naturally gifted and there might be something wrong with them. This happens so often that it ended up creating and feeding this huge myth that musical hearing skills are innate and genetically transmitted. According to this belief, if you don't have a great musical ear at birth, there's no way for you to develop one. 
and you cannot do anything to improve these skills. Like many other mainstream myths, this common myth about musical talent lacks substantial evidence, and science has proven it to be totally wrong on multiple occasions. The most important scientific study on this topic has been conducted by a team of researchers, including John Sloboda, a very important name in the music cognition field. He conducted many other important studies related to the mechanisms behind musical memory and music perception in general. Some of his books have been published by very big names in the education field, such as the Oxford University Press. This study is titled Innate Talents, Reality or Myth? and shows evidence that innate talent in any discipline is a giant myth. Here are a few quotes from this paper. The evidence we have surveyed in this target article does not support the talent account, according to which excelling is a consequence of possessing innate gifts. High levels of accomplishment invariably require lengthy and intensive training, and even people who are not believed to have any special talent can purely as a result of training reach levels of achievement previously thought to be attainable only by innately gifted individuals. Large amount of regular practice were found to be essential for excelling. And one last very interesting observation is that where early precocity is encountered, it is invariably preceded by ample opportunities and encouragement. In other words, developing early skills in a certain activity is the consequence of early exposure to the field in which an individual excels, usually resulting from the stimuli and encouragement from their family members. John Sloboda also took part in another scientific study related to this topic titled The Role of Practice in the Development of Performing Musicians. Here is a quote from it. These data have fully confirmed the existence of a strong positive relationship between practice and achievement in musical performance. High achievers practice the most, moderate achievers practice a moderate amount, and low achievers practice hardly at all. Another study by Wallentin and others, titled The Musical Ear Test, a new reliable test for measuring musical competence, confirms that innate talent is in no way correlated with high levels of musical competence. To sum everything up, it's clear that we must reconsider what we think talent is, namely something that cannot be taught and learned. To draw a very simple parallel real quick, I can say that developing a great musical ear is like learning a new language. If you take the time to practice the language and internalize it very well, you can become fluent in it. But this doesn't mean that you're going to be the next Shakespeare. Similarly, you can absolutely become fluent in the musical language and learn to play by ear, recognize melodies and chords by ear, improvise great melodies on the spot, and so on. But developing these skills doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to become the next Mozart. We need to redefine what we mean by the expression musical talent. Music is just a language that allows you to express what you want to say, and you can absolutely learn the language and become fluent in it. There's no lack of talent that will impede that. Then what you want to express in that language is up to you. Mozart and Shakespeare said things that were so amazing that they became historical. We might say that Mozart and Shakespeare had a talent because of the uniqueness of their ideas which are a personal thing and aren't a learnable skill. But the skills and the medium they adopted to express those ideas are totally learnable. You too might have something wonderful to express through music. And by internalizing the musical language, you can build the medium that will allow you to properly do that without any talent whatsoever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this clip and I'd like to sum everything up by making a few final considerations. What makes the real difference in the long term is not whether you are kind of innately gifted and you were given the perfect musical ear at birth or not. That doesn't matter at all in the long term, especially. What really matters is the way we think, 
when we try to process music and when we try to understand music. So most of the musicians we think are innately gifted develop these skills over time by just intuitively adopting the right thought processes and repeating them so they became second nature for them. And when it's second nature for you to think in the right way, to process music in the effective way, then these skills keep on developing over time. Every time you listen to music, every time you sing something, every time you kind of improvise something on your instrument, every time you practice, these skills keep reinforcing and reinforcing and reinforcing. So in the long term, that makes a huge difference because you keep improving. Because if you adopt these right thought processes, if you listen to music from the right perspective, your relative pitch skills get better and better and better and they never stop getting better. So in 10 years, 15 years of playing music every day, you can get a totally amazing musical ear. And that can seem an innate gift, but it's not. And this is the very specific reason why it isn't. So in conclusion, talent doesn't really make any difference when it comes to developing relative pitch skills. What really makes a difference is the way you think, the way you mentally process music. Musicians who naturally develop these skills are able to do so because they intuitively adopt the right thought processes and they repeated them till it became second nature for them to think in that way, to mentally process music in the right way. And as explained earlier, these skills can totally be learned independently from their current level. It doesn't matter if you're a total mess right now, you can develop these skills to the extent you want by practicing in an effective way and adopting the right thought processes. So since these skills can be learned, well, talent, it's not really something we should worry about. That's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. I suggest you check out our website, our video course. You can find all the links in the description section below. And if you're serious about your training, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like to this video, and you can also leave your questions in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.